Hello, my name is Asha Wagner. I'm a captain here at Station 29. Hello, my name is Daniel De Aguinaga. I'm an engineer here at Station 29. And today we're going to go over the foam rig here at 29. Come check it out. Foam 29 is built on a 1988 Ford F700 chassis and is powered by a 7.8 liter diesel engine. It's 26 feet long and stands at a height of 8 feet 4 inches. It's the only foam unit in the department. The foam unit is a mobile foam proportioning producing unit that can be dispatched anywhere in the city of San Jose or county of Santa Clara for hazardous materials incidents that require large amounts of foam. You'll see it respond to incidents that involve a large spill of hydrocarbons or polar solvents. Hydrocarbons are products like gasoline, oil, and diesel. Polar solvents are products like ethanol and acetone. Foam is used to suppress the flammable vapors coming off of these types of fuels, and then it acts like a blanket and smothers the fire. We typically see these types of spills and incidents that involve large storage tanks, railroad tankers, tanker trucks, and large aircraft fires. To suppress these type of fires, the foam unit is equipped with a 750-gallon tank that carries alcohol-type concentrate aqueous film-forming foam. Although the foam unit is a very important unit in our fleet, it is not a self-sufficient piece of equipment. It needs a nursing fire engine to deliver the water required to maintain the appropriate pressures that the foam needs to be produced at the manufacturer's recommendations. Let me show you how this works. Uh, when the foam unit arrives on scene, I as, engineer, as the engineer on the foam unit will be responsible to make sure the supply lines coming from the nursing engine are hooked up into the uh, foam unit. At a minimum, I will hook up one hose line to the water thief and another one to any of the other inlets over here on the back of the foam unit. Once I've made sure that the hose is attached to the inlet, I will open up the appropriate valve to make sure that it allows water coming into the foam unit. Once I'm ready, I will signify to the nursing engine engineer that I'm ready for water and confirm that I have water coming in. After that, I will head to the foam panel to further my operations. Once at the foam panel, the first thing I would do is make sure I have water pressure coming into the foam unit by using this dial right here and looking at the black needle on the dial showing uh, water pressure coming into the unit. Once I confirm water pressure coming in, I would pull and open the appropriate valves turn on the PTO and adjust the metering valve for the correct foam percentage that I need for the operation, whether I need 3% or 6%. After I made sure I have the correct uh, settings, I turn up the dial on the foam to make sure I match my foam solution pressure with my water pressure coming out the discharge and open up the appropriate discharge for the operation. Depending on the size of the operation, for example, if we have a large fuel storage tank at our local international airport, we may use something like this deck gun in order to mitigate the fire at the storage tank. If we get close enough, this deck gun will have a decent reach to put enough foam solution on the fire. If not, if we need to use something that will ensure personal safety, we can always detach this deck gun off of this stem right here, attach it to this device, and use it as a portable monitor using extended hose lines up to this portable monitor to set it at the correct settings and put it at the right reach and angle in order to mitigate the fire at the storage tank. So as you can see, this apparatus is one important piece of equipment in our lineup of tools to help the San Jose Fire Department tackle very specific hazards that it can occur any day of the week in our large city. And remember, we're an all-risk fire department. It doesn't matter what the situation or hazard is, we have the training and equipment to keep our city of San Jose safe. Until next time, Thanks for watching.